So you're a video editor, but for some reason you can't work from your usual workstation. I don't know, you're out of town, you're homesick, or maybe there's a pandemic outside and you just can't leave your house. Don't look at me like that. Anything's possible. Well, here are a few tips on how to make your remote editing experience much better and flexible. I mean, the title was not a joke. This is Resolve, working on my phone, playing 4K raw footage from Arursa without even breaking a sweat. Hold on. There we go. And you too can do this for free with any NLE of your choosing. Let me show you how. But first, speaking of choice, you have a choice in music libraries. Ours has been Soundstripe for the last three years. They have a wide and solid selection of music with stems and even sound effects, all with unlimited downloads for one price. Use code NEVERLAND to get 10% off your first bill. Okay, before we jump into this and all the wonderful applications this method has, let's start with the basics. Yes, this video is focused on DaVinci Resolve, our NLE of choice, but you'll find information relevant to any remote video editing workflow. If you absolutely don't care, I guess you can jump to this timestamp to check out this. All right, so let's talk about how a traditional remote workflow would look like for Resolve. As it turns out, with many things Resolve, some of its best features are also its biggest downsides. For example, because it uses a database to handle project files, you can have an independent project server that all computers in your local network can access, allowing for some awesome flexibility and workflows inside your studio. Having the ability to access a project from any computer in the network without any file transfers right from the start screen means your colleagues can quickly take a look at something in your project or even jump in at the same time. Maybe start color grading or adding VFX while you're still cutting. This also allows for live saving, essentially autosave on steroids. Every time you make a change to anything, it autosaves without a performance save. This means that you never lose any progress, even when there is a crash. It's awesome and we love it. But this project management system also means that there are no project files to share. You can look all over your computer, but you will never find the project file. That's because it lives inside the database. And that doesn't mean it's not impossible to take a project round trip from one location to another. It's just frustrating. If you want to do this, you have to export a project as a DRP and then import it to a different database. Once you're done or need to send it back, you'll need to export it again from location two and then import it back to the first, creating a conflict since you're trying to add a project with an existing name. But then you rinse repeat and you do this as many times as you need to complete your project. Though each time you'll end up with a copy of a copy of a copy of your project. It also means that opening a project on location two will almost definitely require you to relink footage. It does not automatically look for the files on adjacent folders like Premiere does. Instead, it looks for the exact location the original footage was in. Luckily, in your preferences, you can add a map location that can help you correct network paths or drive letter mismatches between two systems. You still have to keep track of the exact folder structure from location one for this to work, however. This is also a database-wide setting, so it doesn't just apply to this one project. All of your projects in locations two database will be affected by this setting. So if you're already using this setting for other reasons, you might unlink the footage from all your other projects in this database. Still, this can make things a little bit better having to avoid relinking footage, even when heading it back to location one. Not so pleasant, is it? And that's assuming location two has all the original footage locally and that the system is powerful enough to run Resolve reliably. What if all your editing stations are in one place and all you have at home with you is your wimpy overpriced MacBook with no dedicated graphics and no real horsepower. Then what? Well, then you turn to Parsec. Linus Media Group made us aware of this service and we've been using it ourselves to avoid unnecessary travel. Nadia's personal system is a 13 inch MacBook that is not suited for smooth experience when editing 4K multicams in Resolve. In fact, this will be challenging even for the bulkiest and heaviest of laptops. But thanks to Parsec, she can edit these projects on her MacBook as long as she has a stable internet connection I'm not using my computer back there. You see, Parsec allows you to control a computer remotely, like Windows Remote Desktop or TeamShare. This idea is not new. However, unlike those services, or really any other remote desktop applications we've come across, Parsec is different because it was made for gamers. That means that the service prioritizes low input lag 
and keeping your audio and video in sync. Gamers are sensitive to these things, and it just so happens video editors are too. The result is a pretty seamless experience, and one that works across multiple devices. So Nadia gets to edit multicam footage stored in our network storage from wherever she wants in her home, and on her tiny MacBook. She can download music or other assets, add them to the project, and once she's done, I can export it, again from our network storage, and I don't have to deal with any sort of file transfers. It's all there as if she had done the work from here as well. Let me hand it over to Nadia to hear how her experience using Parsec on her MacBook miles away from this location has been. When I'm not in the lab making babies and being essential, I'm at home, editing. But how on such a janky little laptop? How can I edit 4K footage with Parsec? As easy as making a TikTok account, Parsec can be installed in just a couple of clicks. Super easy. I said that twice. But make an account and friend request who's ever computer you'd like to control remotely. Like in real life, my only friend on Parsec is Pablo. I can control his big space computer from the comfort of my own couch. Should I say hand-me-down couch? I don't want to sound too pathetic though. Since Pablo has an ultra-wide setup with three monitors because he's a fancy boy, and my little MacBook only has a 13-inch display, uh, to keep the same aspect ratio, it looks a little compressed, like this. Sure, I could change it to fill up the whole screen, but I kind of like it this way. One time though, I ended up on one of Pablo's flanking monitors and had to ask him for help uh, to be redirected back to the main ultra-wide monitor to continue editing a project. And then on uh, more than one occasion, I'll get a text from Pablo interrupting my TikTok time, telling me to get back to work so he can use his computer again. Since he can see what I'm doing and he sees that nothing's happening on the monitor and nothing's moving. <laughs> That's the only downside, really. We can't exactly use that computer at the same time. Other than that, I'm very impressed with Parsec. I didn't notice any lag, nothing seemed out of sync, and it was an overall seamless experience. Now go away so I can get back to, to work. So much work to do. <laughs> but that's not all. Thanks to their beta, Parsec also works with your smartphone. Something I thought would make a cool gimmicky clickbait thumbnail, but found the experience to be extremely impressive and usable. So no, I'm not running Resolve natively on my phone, I'm just streaming my computer screen to it and controlling its inputs, mouse and keyboard, with minimal amounts of lag over the internet. Which is the next best thing. In fact, it might be better. As we explained earlier, there are a ton of benefits to having your editing station be connected through a local network, especially when using collaborations in DaVinci Resolve, which works through Parsec, even if you're in a different location. This would be impossible if it was running on my phone natively. This also means that I don't need a second license to run all the programs I already own on my desktop, and that I can run all of them on my phone. But wait, there's more. If you have a modern Samsung phone, I believe starting with the S10, they have this thing called Samsung DeX, which, with one of these dongles, means you can plug in a mouse, a keyboard, and even a freaking monitor. Force full screen on Parsec, and bam! Your editors have no excuses. Again, I can't stress this enough. I thought this would be a gimmick that I can use for views. But well, sure, it's not perfect. It's super usable and amazingly flexible. This entire video was cut using this method. Sure, under ideal situations, I am sitting right next to my main station, making lag even less noticeable. But even when connected over at Nadia's about 10 miles away, I observe one to two frames of lag at most. With all that said, let's talk about why this isn't perfect, because nothing ever is. I think the most obvious downside is that your main host computer has to remain turned on. If you're a solo creator and were hoping to use this method for your next event coverage, <laughs> whenever that may be, where you want to edit on the go, you might not want to leave your computer on back home 24 seven, just so that you can connect to it a couple of times for a few hours at your hotel or wherever. You also wouldn't be able to ingest footage that you shot at this location. If students are looking to have no one at their offices will have similar issues. If the host computer freezes, for example, and needs a manual reboot, and there's no one there at the host locations to do it, you're kind of SOL. Uh, in the free version, you, you're limited to a single monitor, and on Android, I couldn't get it past 16x9. 
uh, there's some noticeable video compression artifacts, especially when the scene is changing rapidly. There's somewhat of a performance tax, as your host computer now has to encode its display and stream it online, tying up both graphics, computing, and network resources. Again, not making it unusable, it's barely noticeable, but depending on your system and its configuration, your mileage may vary. Let's see, what else? Uh, already mentioned you need an internet connection. Oh, that, that's right. Since it is an internet service, while it hasn't have any security vulnerabilities exposed, and hopefully it never has, security is still a concern. As with social engineering hacking, or even if you're just not careful sharing usernames and passwords, there is a chance that you may be a victim to system hijacking, and someone can gain full control over it. I mean, you'd be able to see exactly what they're doing, but if no one's physically there, or if they're distracted, yeah, this could be catastrophic. There's a reason giant Hollywood studios have editing stations that are 100% offline. Even if highly unlikely, the risk of leak for the next big blockbuster is just too great for them. But for everyone else, as we try to resume work in a responsible way, this can make the difference between not being able to resume work at all and having everyone back to work. Some remotely and some at the office following proper safety procedures. So, do you know of any other solutions to these problems? Leave a comment down below, we'd love to check them out. Otherwise, give us a like if you liked this video or if you found it useful. Subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you guys next time. By the way, you might have noticed uh, got myself a new recorder. Gonna be doing some mic tests uh, coming up here. And also, if you hear that hum, that's from the light right there. It's not great, is it? It's not a great light. <laughs> Next time.